with, um, hopefully you had enough bits to write your version of the scramble function uh, that will pass this test. So uh, this is going to basically lead straight into the solution. So I'm just going to pick up from there. Um, what we have is that we need to get the middle of, of this. Um, and, and I'm going to use um, word uh, starting from 1 to negative 1, and I'm going to make that into a list. Um, and that's going to give me the word. Okay, uh, back up. I forgot. Uh, first, first thing I have to check is if the length of the middle, uh, I'm sorry, if the length of the word is uh, greater than or equal to 3. Um, and then if it is, then I need to get the middle of the word. And then I'm going to call random.shuffle on that, on the middle. And then I'm going to set word is equal to word at 0 plus uh, that join together on the empty string on the middle, because that's going to be a list, plus the word at the negative 1. And then finally, I'm going to return word. And let's see, let's see how we're going to do on this, if it's going to work. Um, I think, have I imported? Yes, I have imported random, so this should, this should work. Let's see, I think that that's going to work. Um, I'm actually being honest, uh, it's been a while since I've looked at the solution. Uh, I'm going to find out by running uh, my test, and we'll see. Ah, that seems to work. Looks like that's going to do it. I'm going to hmm, be hopefully optimistic here. Uh, let me look at my solution here. Oh, yes. Oh, and then the other thing here is I also added in if this matches something that looks like a word. So if there is, um, I need to make sure that, I, like, say say there's a bit of a, a string of, of punctuation that gets thrown in, uh, like a comma, a colon, uh, I don't know, maybe some quotes thrown in there. I don't want to try shuffling those, right? So I want to also say it, this this word has to be at least three characters long, and it, additionally, it needs to match some word character. So um, uh, that's going to be backslash w. Uh, word characters include the letters, uh, numbers, the underscore, and a dash. Um, so that's what word. It's a bit esoteric. You have to commit that to memory. So uh, I can run this again, and uh, let's see. Oh, re. I need to import the re module in order to use that. Uh, again, I just like these to be in alphabetical order. Um, so import the RE, and then let's see how I'm doing. Looking good. Okay, so here we are. Now we have we talked about uh, oh our splitter. Let's let me go back and, and get that. Um, boy, am I gonna have to search all the way back? Uh, there we go. Splitter compile. I'm gonna take this bit of code that I totally understand and can use. I'm going to set that splitter equal to that. I feel like grouping that like that. And now I, I know that I can get for word in splitter dot split uh, on the line. And I can say print word. Let's just do that for the moment. And let me run Scrambler on, for instance, um, the uh, spiders, right? So we want to look at that. Um, and, and, and you see that it's printing uh, don't worry, comma, spiders. Okay, that's fine. Um, uh, uh, what I want is to split on and uh, print the uh, scrambled word. Let's just look at, uh, so we're trying to think about how we could use this to, uh, to put our, to, to scramble all the words and put them back together. So if I instead print the scrambled words, I see uh, keep <clears throat> Actually, we can't tell if keep was uh, properly scrambled, but house looks good, casually looks good, spiders don't. We see that these uh, appear to have been scrambled correctly. So what we're trying to do is apply the scramble to each of the things that are uh, being returned by word, uh, uh, being returned by the split. And so uh, rather than using a for loop, um, what we really want is to use something like a list comprehension. So um, we want to take all the bits that have been split by our splitter, run them through the scramble function, and then print the output of that joined back together, actually on the empty string. Because remember, our splitter is going to split into the things that look like words and then the things that are in between the words. So when we put that list back together, we just want to put it back together on the empty string. So really, a for loop is not what we want in this instance. Um, we're going to, you know, I'm going to show you how to do this first with a list. Uh, I'm going to say words is equal to um, scramble word 
let's let's look at how we might do it with a uh, a list comprehension scramble word four words in in uh, in our split and let uh, let's see actually let's just print words and see what we get print words uh, I believe let's see that's not necessary it's showing you there so let's just print that and what we see is yes we're getting back this list of this empty string don't has been uh, scrambled the space worry doesn't look like it was scrambled, but it went through the scrambler. And then the, the comma space. Uh, so it looks to be doing what we want. Uh, we could then put this back together by joining it on the empty string. And now what we'll see is uh, it looks like it's working correctly. Let's see if it is uh, passing the tests. Uh, let's run make test. And that works. Pretty awesome. So one of the things that I really have wanted to stress throughout all of this is that we have a working version now. That working version was built from little pieces that we that we went off and we, we really wrapped our head around. We tried to understand, for instance, how this regular expression is going to give us the words and the non-words. We went and wrote this function called scramble that will handle any one word. Um, and it's written in such a way that it's going to handle actually the non-words too, because if it's a non-word or a short word that shouldn't be scrambled, it's simply going to return the word unchanged. Only if the word matches this criteria will it be will it be changed. And so now we have these these bits that we're composing into this larger program. We got something that worked. Hooray! We jump up and down with excitement. And now we look at our code and we say, well, can I make this better? Can I refactor it in some way, maybe make it faster, make it cleaner, make it shorter, more concise, add documentation, all those kinds of things. Um, so like one of the things I could see right away is I'm assigning this to words and then I'm just using it once. So I'm, I'm never really using uh, this assignment, so I don't really feel like I need it. So instead of assigning it to words, I'll just print uh, that and I'll print this expression and now I, I no longer need the words. Um, if you feel like the other version was more readable, stick with it. Uh, let's run make test. Uh, let's see, oh I, I probably just have a syntax error here. I think I'm missing an extra parenthesis there. Is it going to be happy now? Uh, it's saying problems one, unimported, uh, unused import sys. Okay, we're not using this so we can just get rid of it. That's fine. Um, let's go back to our terminal. Let's run make test. Okay, we're still passing all of our tests. We, all we did was shorten up our code a little bit. Um, to me, this is a completely fine, acceptable solution. This line is a little long. Maybe it was more readable when we uh, had the uh, we assigned it to the words. Um, let me show you a shorter way to write this, which I think is just generally prettier, and it's going to be using a map statement. So um, uh, when I use map. The first function to map should be uh, a function. Um, the first argument to map is a function. And the second argument is some sort of a generator, uh, iterable, some sort of a list. Um, Splitter.split is going to return a list of words. Each one of those will be fed as the argument to scramble. I believe this should work. Let me just run test real quick. I think I've got too many parentheses or something like that. It's always too many or not enough. Uh, okay, what am I missing here? Maybe it was not enough. Great, okay, it was just a, a matter of parenthesis. So um, let me show you the, the slightly longer way to write that. If, if we were to write this using a lambda, so if I were to say uh, lambda uh, some uh, w, I'm going to call it w for word, and then I can say scramble w. This works exactly the same. Um, but it, the, the lambda here is not necessary because scramble has been written in such a way that it expects one, a single positional argument. And so the map works in such a way that um, that each, each one of these uh, elements that is returned by this list here, by this generator, will be fed as the argument to scramble. And therefore, um, they will be processed by scramble. We're applying this function to all the elements in this list, and then we're joining it back together uh, to get our, our, our output test again, uh, our, our output, the structure of that. So if we run our program, uh, it's called scramble, and we run it on the inputs, you know, spiders, 
Uh, that looks cool. Let's run it on the Constitution and see what we get. Um, I don't know. It's kind of funny. I think it's funny. I like it. Um, it's a kind of a useless program, sure, but look at all the things that we learned about regular expressions and about testing and refactoring. And that's the point of these exercises. And I, and I, I you know, I hope you, I hope you're seeing the bigger picture here. Um, let's see if there's any other points that I missed. Uh, here, I, I think I have some nice diagrams that make you, uh, that help you think about. So splitter.split will give you this list and we can map each element of this list into scramble. It's just like writing out scramble the empty string, scramble don't, scramble space. And the scramble has been written so that things like this uh, and this will be just return unaltered, but don't and worry and spiders will each be twisted up. Uh, and so then that's going to create this new list that has this these altered words that then need to be put back together on the empty string to create, uh, to recreate the, the input of the line. Um, so I show you here how you could write that with a for loop. I think that's the, the worst way to write it. I think that this is not a bad way to write it. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, I, I actually, I took this out of the final uh, version. I, I didn't like showing you even more complex code. Um, and then here, oh no, actually I think maybe I did leave this one. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, here I show you how you can write it uh, with this, this lambda line. Um, but my favorite way is, is, is the way I show it in the solution with the map. So I think that's the whole, the whole uh, lesson. Uh, so going back, you have to remember that when you call split, like when you're saying string split or re split, the pattern that you use to split will be missing from the resulting split text. So if you want that to be included, Using re split, you're going to put that pattern in capturing parenthesis, and then you'll get back both. Um, regular expressions are really, really complex. Um, I really recommend you go spend some time reading a book just on regular expressions, because once you get that into, uh, into your toolbox, you will be amazed at how much you can use them. Um, we use the random shuffle here. Uh, if you're going to go off and program a card game, you're definitely going to want to use the shuffle method to shuffle up your cards um, and understand how that relates to random seeds so that if you're, when you're writing your, your card game, you want to be able to test it. In the testing uh, stage, you want to be able to pass in those seeds so that you're always getting them shuffled in the same way so that you can be sure that your program is actually working correctly. Um, uh, again, I just keep hammering about the differences that, or the similarities between for loops and list comprehensions and map. I, I really often prefer to write things with map. I just think that it, it uh, uses the least amount of syntax, but that may or may not be uh, what you feel is the most readable. So you should write code uh, the way that you want to write it. Um, so I have a few other ideas for, for going further, other things that you could do to, uh, to play with this program. Uh, I hope you found it fun, and we'll go into the next chapter.